Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 31 of Road to Colonization, and we start in space, just bringing a booster back. Yeah, there are a few things we have to do before we can head to Jewel today, which we will be starting, sending our things to Jewel, but um, there's still a little bit of uh, fueling and uh, you know, supplying to do, but we'll uh, get that done pretty quickly. But first, we've got to um, land this booster from last time, which carried a uh, fueling spacecraft into orbit, so we'll just drop it here in the ocean, recover it and uh, reuse it. Anyway, so the um, fuel shuttle is now full of fuel, ready to go back to Kerbin and start fueling up the uh, Jewel mothership, which I have finally picked a name for. I have gone with Jack P's suggestion, The Endurance. Yes, I asked a few episodes ago for some names for the Jewel mothership, and my favorite one by far, well, I don't know, not by far, just one of my favorite one was um, The Endurance from Jack P. Um, that is uh, the name of the ship in Interstellar as well, which he did point out, which uh, is cool because I quite like the film to Stella, um, but yeah, so the endurance, it also sounds pretty cool. Anyway, so we've planned our maneuver to head back to Kerbin um, with our load of fuel and dump it into the endurance so that we can, uh, well, head on to head on to Jewel, because the endurance requires a huge amount of fuel, it is a gigantic spacecraft, um, so yes, anyway, we drop down to Kerbin now and start, um, start getting into orbit, We're, well, we already are in orbit, but start uh, bringing our Apoapsis down so that we can meet up with the endurance. Now I always do these in two burns, so the first one just brings my apoapsis down quite a bit, slows me down a bunch, and then the second one will actually get me into a circular orbit. We of course do a plane change so that we get into the same plane as the endurance, and then we start our second burn, slowing down, getting our encounter. Um, I'm actually going to meet, I'm not going to meet it right now, I'm going to meet it in about an orbit's time um, once I've got the thing all set up, because this the thrust to weight ratio on this uh, fuel shuttle is pretty bad. But eventually we do get ourselves a nice encounter, so um, yes, and then we arrive at the uh, at the Endurance, which hasn't been renamed yet, but it will be <laughs> when I uh, get around to it. Um, it does get renamed in this episode, and we dock to one of the big docking ports and start pumping the fuel across. You can see how much fuel this uh, spacecraft requires, so uh, I wouldn't be able to entirely fuel it from Minmus without losing my mind. So we're going to have to launch some fuel on rockets. Yes, there'll be a little more of this. Now this is actually bound for the Concordia. We haven't fueled that up yet. The Concordia, of course, the spacecraft that first went to Duna, also did a little trip to EVE, and now will be our transport between Jewel and Kerbin. So yes, that's where this fuel is going. This will entirely fuel it up, and it will all be good. Um, there will be a few fuel launchers in this, but they will be very edited down. But we will watch the, the whole launch of this, because, you know, it's uh, nice to see these big rockets fly. And, well, it's uh, pretty boring if you cut out the launch of... Uh, <laughs> if you cut out all the launchers, it'd be pretty... Uh, lame. I actually do still watch all the SpaceX launches, although I have to say they're getting a little boring, you know, they're just going really well. I cut, sometimes I'm like, just explode a little bit, you know, just lose an engine, you know, just keep it a little, uh, keep a little spicy, <laughs> but uh, no. <laughs> it is still always amazing to see those SpaceX boosters land, though. It is pretty cool. Anyway, we're in orbit now, and uh, we're just going to push off, get ourselves an encounter, fuel up the Canterbury. Not the Canterbury, the Concordia. The Canterbury is a different spacecraft, which won't be going to Jewel. Uh, but before we, uh, we've got our encounter, but before we meet up, we're just going to land the booster a little precariously. I actually overtake my parachutes briefly <laughs> and then land. And then uh, we meet up with the Concordia after a bunch of, well, time and a little bit of maneuvering. But there we go. Um, this fueling spacecraft is actually almost as big as the Concordia. Um, it's mostly just liquid fuel and oxidizer. Uh, well, it was mostly just liquid fuel, but this does require some liquid fuel and oxidizer. We also uh, pump in a little fuel to this little lander so that we can deorbit it, because we won't need this for our mission and we don't want it slowing us down. So yes, we're just going to uh, turn around and uh, fly away. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking of maybe bringing it back on top of the fueling spacecraft, but that seemed a bit... Yeah, eh, 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 you know, I didn't feel like it. So anyway, now that's all fueled up, uh, this can head back. Uh, I cut out most of the fueling because it is quite annoying having to put the fuel in each of those little liquid fuel tanks. Um, because they only get, they only hold 400 each, so it takes a while. And when you have too many UIs open, it starts to lag quite a lot, so it's annoying. But anyway, yes, the Concorder is fueled up now, if that wasn't entirely clear. And then uh, we deorbit this and land it on the ocean. And then launch another one of these. Yes, we are going to cut through most of this launch, because there will be a lot... There'll be a few of these today. Um, I thought I was almost done last episode, but then... But that wasn't true. This actually took, uh, this was about six hours to record this episode. About four hours of fueling and supplying. But don't you worry, I will put that all in about ten minutes of, uh, <laughs> of actual video. Because I'm very kind. Um, so yes, we do all of that. We dock to the, um, 
uh, doctor the the endurance and start transferring fuel ac uh, fuel across. This is actually bigger than the other fueling spacecraft. It carries a little more liquid fuel oxidizer and also some life support, as you see here. It's tucked inside just for simplicity, and that's just going to go into these big tanks here, so that we'll have about seven years with our crew of Kerbals. Uh, we'll have enough life support for about seven years. Then, of course, before leaving, we land the booster, which took that to orbit because these are very expensive and our money is dwindling, <laughs> so <laughs> we have to get them back. Uh, so we recover that, and then this leaves after uh, putting all the fuel. They'll, I'll need to send up another one of these, but yeah, I could totally uh, fill it up with just two of these vehicles, which is quite nice. That's life support and fuel, which is quite good. Thanks to the Minmus mission, really, that's kind of what allowed this to only be two uh, missions. Anyway, we land that and launch another one right away, and uh, <laughs> again, cut through the launch a bit. Just the cliff notes, um, just pushing on into orbit here. And then uh, then we'll release the spacecraft so that it can go and find its destination and start putting fuel into the vehicle. There it goes, and here it is, arriving at the uh, Endurance, docking onto the docking ring and starting to deposit its fuel in after, of course, we land the booster again. Yes, these are all fairly formulaic, so I thought maybe you could just see them all in, you know, 40-second clips. <laughs> anyway, the Endurance is totally full of fuel and life support and ready to go once it has her crew. So. Uh, uh, yes, this can go back now and land on the ocean. And then we're launching another <laughs> fueling spacecraft. Yes, uh, there is another spacecraft which requires fuel, but I believe this is the last fueling launch. Um, the last one of these uh, big uh, rockets with really massive things on top. This is just going to the BOP miner, um, because the BOP miner actually does require some fuel. It was built in orbit, so it has no fuel in it. So we're going to dock to the rear of it, on the bottom of this, there are some docking ports that just make this easier. I've got a little extension on the front of this so that it can uh, um, get in between these engines. And you see it bounces off initially, um, but I rotated it a little bit and uh, we dock on um, and start pumping fuel in. Uh, this is just the, the normal fueling spacecraft. The ones for the uh, Endurance were actually slightly bigger, as I said, because they needed a little more uh, oxidizer. Anyway, so we start pumping fuel in uh, and then finish pumping fuel in. Uh, it's all totally fueled up now. And then this uh, undocks and we'll head back and land on the, uh, actually land on the green next to the KSC. That was a pretty precise landing. That was quite nice, actually. And then, of course, we land the booster. <laughs> I wonder how many times I've said that this episode. Yes, um, usually I don't cut these things down this much, but again, there was just so many. But anyway, now it's time to bring our crew back from Odin Station. Uh, there are eight crew on Odin Station, which uh, means one of them will have to stay here because this spacecraft only carries seven. Um, so I'm sure they'll be very happy about that. But we need to get our crew back so they can get some R&R &R so that they'll uh, be all ready for the Jadul mission and not too grumpy that they uh, have been in space for so long. Uh, so yes, they're going to deorbit now and then re-enter hopefully safely of course safely my spacecraft are incredibly safe i've never lost a kerbal in this series or even in road to exploration so yeah and then we land on the ocean very nice and safely uh, and then we need to reposition the concordia if you uh, paid attention when we were fueling it up you'll know that we it's actually in a bit of a um in a bit of a, an elliptical orbit so we need to circularize that before leaving for uh jewel um, I also ditched the little science module on the side because we don't need that anymore. This is just basically a big space taxi at this point. Um, so yes, we're just uh, firing up the engines, burning off a little fuel. We have fuel to spare really in this because it's um, well, it's got it's got a lot of del it's got enough delta V to go to Jewel, um, more than enough really. Four kilometers is quite 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 good. Anyway, uh, it does, however, need one thing. The Concordia is full of fuel, but it is not full of life support. So we launch um, a little life support module on top of the Pulsar X, our SSTO, and we'll cut to getting to orbit because, uh, yes, it's another supply mission. This has been a lot of episodes of getting this mission ready, and I was um, pretty uh, I was pretty determined to get it all into, uh, make sure that we actually leave in this episode because, uh, you know, we can't have another episode of fueling. So, uh, like I said, this did take about six hours of recording, um, that's why there's been one less video this week. Uh, but yeah, you know, it was kind of nice <laughs> doing such a big mission, although a little, a little laborious. Anyway, so this is actually in two segments. The first segment of the, this payload is to uh, fuel up the existing tanks, and the other segment is just going to stay on the front to uh, you know, just add endurance time to the mission. So we deorbit this. I'm not going to bother reusing it because you know, six hours. <laughs> and then, of course, we do land the booster, though, because we always land our boosters. And now, finally, 
We are done with resupplying. Everything is full of fuel and life support, and now all it needs is crew. So we are launching the crew of the Concordia first. Just four Kerbals. Um, they will be flying this out. They'll be flying the Concordia out to Jewel. Uh, you know, making sure the space taxi works. And also, I have a mission to um, take the Concordia out to Jewel, put it in an orbit, uh, and. Having two scientists on board will get me enough money to just get me some money. So yeah, I thought I might as well put the uh, people in there right now so that when we get to Jewel, we'll complete the uh, contract, which would be nice. Um, basically, I think it's a space station contract, so yeah. Anyway, this is of course the Pulsar X with the um, with the Ares 6? Ares 5? Ares 5 on top. No. Yeah, Ares 5. That's the name of the vehicle. <laughs> And uh, this uh, this launch isn't cut down because it's, you know, it's no longer fueling and boring stuff. It is taking our crew to go on to their, well, to go on to the Concordia's third mission. It's been to Duna, it's been to Eve, and now it shall go to Jewel and never to Drez because Drez sucks. Uh, <laughs> but no, I'm impressed that it has enough uh, capability. I obviously can't carry any extra landers on the uh, Concordia if it's going out to Jewel um, because... It doesn't have enough Delta V. Like when it went to um, Duna and, and, and Eve, it, it took a bunch of equipment with it. But this can just take Kerbals and obviously the extra life support it requires. Um, so yes, we get our encounter. We uh, do our burn and then we shall arrive at the uh, Concordia. Just four crew, of course. We don't want to be carrying too many. Although with four crew, this will have eight years of life support. So it will be... It could take more. This could probably take... Um, it only takes about two years to get to Jewel, uh, so I'd say it could easily take eight or ten. And so we put the scientists in the science lab. We put uh, Valentina, the commander of the ship, in uh, in the command module, and the engineer in there as well, just for giggles. Um, anyway, uh, now we're just uh, re-entering uh, with an empty capsule, but it does burn up on re-entry slightly annoyingly, which is a bit sad for the, probably the last launch of an Ares uh, 5 vehicle. Um, but there was no crew on board, so it doesn't matter too much. And the pod does actually survive. Um, anyway, we also land the booster, of course, because, you know, that's what we do. <laughs> I don't know why I was trying to explain these. But now it is time for a very important launch. The launch of the Endurance's crew and the last launch of the series. Yes, this is a new vehicle. This is an Ares 6. It can carry 19 Kerbals to orbit. Today it's only carrying 15 um, but yes, this is our new big vehicle uh, that will probably only ever launch once. Um, but it's really cool, and it does actually fit on top of a Pulsar X, which is pretty nice. It doesn't actually quite have enough Delta V to get to orbit, um, but the uh, spacecraft itself can push itself into orbit. Um, bit of a mistake, but it doesn't matter too much, as this is the last launch. Although it would have been nice if it had gone flawlessly, but it really doesn't. But, <laughs> but the crew will get to the Endurance, and they will be ready to go to Jewel. So we get up high, we pick up a little, little bit of some licks of flame, and uh, we match our apoapsis to the Endurance. Then we uh, warp up to our apoapsis, of course, deploying our uh, solar panels so that we don't run out of power, and then we fire up the engines again, and they just fall short of getting us to orbit. Slightly depressingly, because it would be nice if uh, this went more flawlessly, but it's fine. That'll just re-enter and um, burn up and all of that. And the Ares 6 will just push itself onto orbit. Um, so there we go, we deploy everything, and this uh, heads on into orbit, and then to meet the uh, Endurance, so that we can, uh, well, put our crew in there and uh, get ready to head to Jewel. Um, so there we go, looks like we've got an encounter nice and laid in, and then we arrive and dock to the docking ring. Although I did forget to put RCS on this, like a moron, so I have to dock entirely with engines. So I actually come in a little hot at first, and uh, maybe sort of bounce off. But eventually I do manage to dock. Um, <laughs> this was the least flawless launch for the last like launch which was a little bit sad but uh yeah it doesn't matter too much and then we start transferring the crew the obviously jebediah the captain into the uh command pod and then the rest into the gravity ring, which has way too much space for all of this but i had to have the whole ring so you know i mean i could take a lot of kerbals in this but the life support pretty much uh, permits 15 or 16 maximum actually no i think it could do 30 yeah, it could. Um, it can do eight years with 16, um, or, you know, obviously 30 with for four years. Anyway, um, so yes, we detached the fuel shuttle, and now we detach the uh, crew vehicle. And then the crew vehicle re-enters, and I fight 
pretty hard to keep it under control, but it's top heavy and has no SAS because it has no Kerbals in it right now. It's just controlled by a mech jeb unit. So I spin it up to try and uh, survive re-entry, but it does explode. Little bits of it survive, but yes, <laughs> I'm glad there were no Kerbals in this or the last vehicle. Very unceremonious for the last launch of the series. But now, something a little more ceremonious. It is time for the Endurance to make its flight. To take flight and head to Jewel. It will be the first spacecraft, of course, to go because it is the uh, flagship of the fleet. Uh, a little bit of a foolish move, actually. You should probably send all the um, support vehicles first because if a really essential one doesn't work, <laughs> then we're a bit fucked. But uh, this could go to Jewel and come back, um, I think, entirely under its own fuel and with and it has enough life support so there would be no problem anyway so yeah but uh, i'm sure everything will work fine um this is definitely the most capable spacecraft i've uh, ever designed because that uh, giant kind of uh, the big liquid fuel noxizer engine um burns for the longest so it can do the whole exit burn using all of its engines which means it doesn't slow down at any point like a lot of the other spacecraft um which is really nice actually it's a really big benefit uh, and it's just quite nice to fly. Um, it doesn't turn very fast and has no reaction control system, but uh, it's fine. <laughs> and it does look pretty cool. Anyway, uh, we uh, do escape the Kerbin system, though. This burn does take a little while, um, but we do escape this, uh, the Kerbin system. Our Apoapsis going past Duna there, and eventually our Apoapsis reaches Jewel, as you see here, and we get our encounter all laid in perfectly, and all will be well. We'll come in quite far under Jewel, but of course we'll do a little bit of a plane change. As you see here, a little tweak, and there's the spacecraft in the light. But yes, we do our little tweak, and we'll arrive around Jewel, and uh, that'll be pretty nice. Uh, after this, of course, it is time for the Concordia to leave on its uh, on its third mission. It's a really great spacecraft. It's done a lot in this series and in Road to Exploration. It's been really the hero of the series. I do love the Concordia very much. It is less capable, though. Of course, the engine, bur the uh, booster engine, burns out pretty quickly, and um, it is just down to the nuclear engine. So this burn does take quite a while, actually. But uh, the four crew looking very happy to be in such a uh, in, in such a decorated spacecraft, such a, you know, a veteran. Um, and eventually we do get ourselves our encounter with Jewel. And we will also arrive, both of the manned spacecraft will arrive uh, at Jewel. And this actually goes straight into a lathe encounter, which is pretty cool. So that's, yeah, that'll make it even easier. Next to go is fuel system two, uh, the fuel shuttle that will take fuel from the surface of BOP to the, surf to the orbit of BOP and the station that will hold it in orbit. Um, and this uh, this is actually pretty easy, it just has an extra engine strapped on the bottom because these are basically just two big fuel tanks we just put a liquid fuel noxizer engine on the bottom which detaches and uh, it makes this burn really easy and really quick and uh, we do get ourselves again our encounter with Jewel, there we go, we'll do another plane change obviously and uh, head out there and now it is time for the base to leave uh, this spacecraft is uh, probably the worst designed, it flexes a massive amount under the uh, load of these um, vector engines is uh, slightly decreasing its delta v capability but uh, ultimately it's actually fairly okay and the uh, engines burn out pretty quickly and the thrust to weight ratio is pretty bad so this will actually require multiple passes um to do and uh, it actually won't finish that this episode we'll finish this one's burn next episode and send the rest of the things and start arriving at jewel so yes, I guess you can just watch this as I do my little outro. I hope you have enjoyed this. Um, I, this whole series is, uh, well, actually, you know, coming to a close. It's got a few more episodes. We've obviously got a bunch of Jewel stuff to do, so there'll be a bunch of cool stuff coming up. But uh, yeah, this is the final mission. I haven't explicitly said that yet because, uh, well, I don't know. Want to keep you on the hook? Want to, you know, want to keep you guessing? <laughs> but no, uh, it, yeah. So. Um, no, it's pretty cool that we've done our final launch now. A little, a little sad, you know. Anyway, um, but yes, uh, we will see all of the awesome stuff next episode. Arriving at Jewel, and all will be good. So yes, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been episode thirty-one of Road to Colonization. I will see you next time.